Boo! Ah! Boo. Whoa! Wait, that was really scary. Boo! Ah! ah. Whoa! Oh. Ah. Okay, wow. that was, I was actually scared that I'm time. I'm shaking in my boots, subjectivist. So, we're back with some more spooky stuff for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about um, our picks for spooky games to play uh, through the month of October. Some games that really get us in the mood for... Uh, <laughs> For October and Halloween, no. you didn't let me finish. I didn't say That's anything. Spooky. I want to go first. I want to go first. Okay, what's your pick for a good autumnal spooky game? Um, RuneScape. <laughs> but oh, yes. in RuneScape, uh, Night in the Woods. So this is my top pick because it came out in February, but it really put me in the. Halloween-y fall mood. The game it does take back to fall. It's oh. like the colors are very yeah. like yeah. Halloween. It's like a small town in, in, the, in, in the, Pennsylvania. The, autumn. the visuals are beautiful. Yeah. And the backgrounds are amazing. It's it's one of those games that it looks completely unique. Like there's really nothing else that looks like it. it it's very that take those yeah. kind of risks. Aesthetically moody. Very thematically moody. Yeah. The story that like it it's tells. just a moody game, and I feel like the art style really conveys that. Is it a platformer? Yeah, kind of, kind of. It's it's like a, a role-playing game. Yeah. It's RPG. like a visual novel platform. Yeah, the game definitely like, hits home too, with the whole like college students come home from college and. Yeah, she doesn't finish her first year. The main character's name is May, and it's just um, really a story about growing up <laughs> and how hard it is in a really beautiful way. While also at the same time, there's sort of something kind of supernatural going on. You find an arm on the sidewalk at one oh, point. Oh yeah, that's how it starts. Oh, and they're like those dream sequences too, yeah, right? And, and yeah. she's like jumping around rooftops, finding like ghosts. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. we won't we won't spoil anything in case you haven't played it before. Even if you don't like that kind of game, um, I, I have a feeling that there's something to like about it, no matter what your tastes are. There's little Halloween in this game, so. And That's it's, very it's, topical. It's goofy too. It is goofy. Oof. It's sweet and serious and nostalgic and spooky. And the character design is great. It looks really fun. It's huh. a little, it's a little, uh, a little taco for me. Yeah, I, I do remember the main character being pretty annoying, but I also kind of remember that was like the point. Yeah, it's definitely the point. It's still cute. Like it's very cute. All right, so check that game out, guys, if you're interested. Speaking. Yeah of highly successful indie games, my spooky scary autumn game, believe it or not, is Undertale. Cue the music. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Um, Undertale actually has a really special place in my heart. It came out in autumn and I really like distinctly remember listening to the soundtrack, uh, working on like my oil painting class homework, um, and the cool like autumn breeze coming in. So Undertale's about um, a kid who falls into the underground and that's where a whole bunch of monsters were banished by humans and the story is about re-establishing a connection with the monsters um, from an outside perspective and so there are a lot of themes about like friendship and um, you have the choice of if you want to antagonize these creatures who are maybe scary looking and different but they're overall innocent that's definitely the most interesting part to me. I always find it interesting the way developers integrate morals into the mechanics of the game. In a game like this, the repercussions aren't just reflective in the gameplay, they're reflective in the entire story and um, yeah. And it's like, can't you like, if you start over, like the game's aware that you started yeah, over? Yeah, there's a lot of like meta interactions. Two characters specifically um, that are really important to like that sort of meta narrative um, and they were definitely these two major like empathetic points for the audience to connect to. It's actually a lot more difficult if you want to kill everything. The boss battles are like way more difficult because they're actually like defending something and they have something to stand for. That's that's definitely a very interesting angle I feel. Did yeah, you kill Toro? Did you kill the cow Ooh. lady? No, I didn't want to kill her. I accidentally I killed her. I did too time. and then I reset. And then I got yelled like... at! <laughs> Undertale is genuinely a very charming game. I, I like that look that it has to it. It opens up a bunch of doors for like fans to imagine like what the characters might look like and what, I think that's part of why it has such a big fan base. Alright so next on the list uh, my personal recommendation for the spooky season 
is a game called Little Nightmares. I thought it was an indie game. It was developed by an indie company, but it was actually published by Bandai. Again, there's really nothing else like it. It's horror, but it's also a puzzle platformer and it's very spooky. Um, but it's like fantasy spooky. You play as this tiny little character named Six, uh, and it's very ambiguous as to who you are, what you are, where you came from, what you're doing. Um, but you're in this strange world. It's all very claustrophobic and dark and you're tiny. You're little, hence the little nightmares. You basically just navigate your way through this really spooky world and try not to get killed by all of these creepy, I mean creepy enemies. Like, I mean, I'm scared easily, but I feel like the characters in this game are so bizarre. They're you're like, it's like if you looked at the scariest parts of the world of Spirited Away. Yeah, it's, it is. It's very Spirited Away. It made away. it a touch more human. Uh, There's this character called the Janitor. Oh my god, that actually really scared me. Pretty freaking scary. There are like a lot of really tense moments. Like the Janitor will like chase you around and he has really long arms. And even when you think you might be safe, he can still get you. Tension and atmosphere are definitely super, super important to this yeah. game. And, and it, it does it so well. Is the implication that you're an actual little child? It's so ambiguous. It's like the way the lore of Little Nightmares is presented kind of reminds me of like Dark Souls, where yeah. there's really nothing there unless you want to do a lot of digging. You can dig into it and but theory craft. Yeah, yeah there's, there's no dialogue. There's no speaking in this game at all. Definitely check it out. So um, I wanted to talk about Soma, which was made by the same developers as Amnesia. <laughs> And Soma is such a crazy game. I, I'm not always that into horror. I don't like jump scares. I have trouble with that kind of thing, but Soma, it's sci-fi, but it's very psychological horror, which is really fascinating to me. It's set way in the future and you're kind of lost in this very creepy underwater landscape and trying to like put things together and find answers for yourself and the visuals are very like it's like dystopian lovecraftian they're super cool to me yeah there's a lot of body horror so maybe stay away if you don't like body horror well it, it's not interesting a lot of body it's horror. not gory it's mm. just it's like corruptive okay there's um, nothing honestly i i get scared pretty easily but when i played through this i wasn't super scared i was more just Intrigue. Yeah, that's really what I like about Soma. It wants you to play through the game and finish it and still be thinking about what the game was saying to you. Yeah, and it definitely, I it. definitely was. It, it really makes you think about humanity and identity and autonomy and... Yeah, because really... there's... I, we can't even disclose too much about what the game's even really about because <laughs> it's, it's, it's all spoilers. It's spoiling, but it's, um, it's very, very fascinating. It looks it, really scary. It's what does the gameplay like? It's, it's first person. It's first person. It's, like, it's, a, it's, it's a first person survival. Yeah, it's yeah. survival. You don't have any ways of defending yourself. You just have to hide. The game starts in modern day and then you're sort of thrown. For like the first 10 minutes. You're thrown into this world and you don't really know what happens and you kind of have to figure it out as you go. And there are so many twists that seem unbelievably confusing at first. Well, anyway, that's Soma, guys. <laughs> that That's probably on the spookiest spectrum yeah, it, for our game. Yeah, it's scary and it's serious. If you're kind of squeamish about spooky games, maybe not Soma, because uh, it is it is pretty scary. Although, I don't know, I feel like I'm pretty squeamish. I'm, I made it through all of Soma, so. It, it's more compelling than like, it's super icky, ick me, icky, like get me out of here. It, it's very, very interesting. If You'll want to finish it. All right, do we have one more, Nick? I, I could do one. Um, so I'm gonna talk about Dead Space on the iPhone. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, I actually, I played that. Rather, I I'm gonna talk about Hollow Knight. The art style is really cute. Um, they're cute little bug characters and cute little like husk husk cute. bug characters. Um, it's really nicely two D animated, which I really like, and it has nice um, backgrounds. the The gameplay is essentially two D platformer Dark Souls. Um, with like hack and slash elements. Um, sounds really fun. Yeah, yeah it is fun. fun. I haven't played too much of it, but it is really good so far. It's not super spooky, but it definitely has a gothic aesthetic. Um, gothic architecture, like underground, made by like bugs. Um, That's cool. Yeah, and the game's really fun to play. And it's actually pretty hard, um, like Dark Souls or like um, Mega Man or like any of those old um, or kind of games like that or Cuphead, just sort of that, that wave. The story is very ambiguous like Dark Souls. It's sort of just you show up and it, it takes a lot of inspiration from Dark Souls, without a doubt. That's super interesting because I feel like when you 
if someone told you this game was inspired by Dark Souls, obviously you would imagine it to look more like Dark Souls in terms of like 3D graphics. This is like it really took deeper themes from Dark Souls and repurposed them with a t totally new artistic direction, which is super cool. And of course, the gameplay looks, it's a platformer. I love yeah. those backgrounds. It's really fun. Because um, hmm. there's a lot of, like, you sit on benches and you wait for, like, this, like, larva to carry you from, from bench to bench, which is, like, bonfire to bonfire. Uh, okay. Um, and you're just trying to build the map of this underground labyrinth. Oh, this is cool. This really reminds me of, it's, <laughs> it's reminding me of Mushroom Men with the colors a lot. I'm getting Shovel Knight a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I've never played Shovel Knight, but I imagine they play similarly. Is there any dialogue in the game? Um, there is. You talk to a few characters. One of the first characters you meet is a map maker. And he's down there, and he's like, I've been making maps for years, and then he disappears, and he goes back to his shop. Oh, yeah. this looks really freaking cool. Yeah, check that out, guys. It looks really nice. I'm going to check it out. All right, guys. Well, well, those are our spooky picks, our fall recommendations for our fans who want to play a game that's a little spooky, a little scary. Claire, thank you for giving me all those recommendations now, for let games. Now, recommend something to you. Do you have any recommendations for places I can purchase art supplies? I do. It's called Blick Art Materials. Whoa! And you can click the link down below in the description for weekly deals, weekly discounts on art supplies. Yeah, especially if you're looking to do some Inktober, guys. Yep. Hashtag Inktober. Or OC Tober or Draw Tober. Yeah, all the Tobers. Or subjectively Tober. Or Toe Tober, <laughs> where you just draw toes all month. Like oh. Sonic. Sonic with toes, this character with toes. The Toe Tober Challenge. Draw a character with no toes and give them toes.